How about another round of applause for her sponsoring this wonderful event? So you're well fed and dessert's coming and coffee's being poured and you learned a lot already. It's been a good day, right? And I, and I love the theme and the mind and the body and the heart and the soul and it all interconnected and it was wonderful. It beats this other, I just did a diabetes fundraiser. They had a pie eating contest. That was not, that was not well thought out, right? And then they, they, another event, a month ago, they did a walkathon for sufferers of plantar fasciitis. I mean, that was ill-conceived, right? Right? Worst of all was the chili cook-off for irritable bowel patients. I mean, that, that was not right at all. So I'm pleased to be here, and, and, uh, and I, I got the call months ago, and they said, can you, can you close our, our day, our, our mind and body and soul and, and heart and soul day, and, and, and tell us why laughter is the best medicine. Can you do that over dessert? I said, absolutely, because that's been my mantra for years, folks. That's what I've told patients. Laughter is the best medicine. So laughter, not the best medicine at all, folks. I apologize. I know that's how it was uh, promoted to you and everything, but uh, uh, I've, I've had to revise my remarks for you a bit, beginning with the title of the program. I now no longer call it laughter is the best medicine. I call it laughter is the best medicine unless you're in a lot of pain <laughs> or you have a bad infection or you have giggle bladder incontinence. So laughter is really the fifth or sixth best medicine. And, and so that's the full title. Every day you can read about 20 new studies that have come out. That, anybody see the one recently about dogs in healthcare? Did you see this? Dogs and health. The mainstream media loved this one. They, ABC News 60 Minutes did a full uh, segment on this. Dogs with their keen sense of smell could detect bladder cancer by sniffing patients' urine samples, right? I'm not making this up. I see some nods back there. You saw it, right? It was fascinating. They showed, they'd line up the specimen cups, they'd bring in the dogs, they'd go, <laughs> They'd go nuts when they could smell bladder cancer. I'm watching this thinking, 21 years of school, and now I'm going to lose my job to a poodle, you know? <laughs> I think we'll have different breeds eventually for different specialties, you know? If you're choking on something, you need to see the retriever, right? <laughs> Erectile dysfunction, you need the wiener dog. And if you have any kind of GI stomach issues, you need a referral to the Shih Tzu, folks. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's health care reform. It's going to the dogs. That's what's happening. Affordable care. It's an affordable canine act. Is That's what it really stands for. That's what's happening. We'll be making our copay soon in kibbles and bits, people. <laughs> and scheduling follow-up visits for a game of fetch, a face lick, and a leg humping. You know, I mean, that's... That's health care reform. That's what's happening. But I think it was George Burns who said it best. George Burns said, you don't stop laughing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop laughing. Of course, he's dead. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> but no, yes, give me a break. He lived uh, to what, 97, 98, 99, 100? Did he make 100? And he's, that's true, he did smoke, yeah, but, uh, but he laughed a lot. It countered the effects, right? And so may we all live as long and laugh as much as George Burns, right? Now, I had a patient who came in who did not share this same philosophy as George Burns and Jimmy Buffett and, and, and Mr. Huxley. And, uh, he came in, retired accountant, turned 90, came in for his annual physical. Okay, so he kind of came in every year on his birthday for his annual physical. He said, I tell you, Doc, it's no picnic growing old. It's no picnic at all, I tell you. There are four things you lose. I was thinking about it last night. Four main things you lose when you grow old. You're going to listen to me for a change, you whippersnapper. I, always telling me what to do. I got ties older than you, kiddo, all right? You're gonna, I'm going to tell you from my wisdom here, the four things you lose as you grow old. You lose your hair, you lose your sex drive, and you lose your ability to do math. Those are the four things you lose. <laughs> He was right, so I gave him some Rogaine, some Viagra, and a calculator. And I tell you, folks, now he does your taxes in 10 minutes, and his hair sticks straight up for four hours. It's really weird. 
It's really bizarre. We get an aerobic workout every time we laugh, too. Norman Cousins, in the book, he called laughter jogging for the innards. Yeah, forget x lax All you need is a... But he's right, because you get the heart pumping, the lungs breathing deeper, the oxygen surging throughout the bloodstream. You're getting a good aerobic workout every time you laugh. But we do. We get a little aerobic workout. We burn some calories. It's not a lot, I'll admit. It's not a lot, every little laugh. Uh, you know, a good belly laugh, you burn a few, right? But, uh, but mostly it's not a lot. But, it be, it, you know, it, it's, uh, that's a fa- every little bit helps, right? They, and it's better than these diet plans. You follow these diet plans, Atkins, South Beach, Weight Watchers. You can go nuts trying to figure Here's the only diet plan we advocate in my office back in Denver, the healthy, humorous diet plan. You can eat whatever you want. You can eat as much as you want. You don't have to exercise at all. You just have to drink eight glasses of water a day from Guadalajara, Mexico. <laughs> and We guarantee the end of a month, you lose the weight, you lose the appetite. We give you a certificate of achievement and a prescription for flagell, too. I know you sat through some workshops and you've been sitting here now for lunch and you're getting tired and, and we all have a little attention deficit disorder as well, right? Everybody's got a little ADD. Did you see that? By the way, a big article in Time Magazine a few weeks ago about ADD. It said 80% of people with ADD have something. There was a game on. I got distracted. I didn't finish. I didn't finish the article, but I'm sure it was good, and I encourage you to look it up. So, um, so anyway, the real healthy, humorous weight loss plan, forget what I said about the water, is, is just to laugh. You know, we burn some calories when, when we, I've had, already had some 79 calorie jokes here today, folks. So, uh, despite the cobbler and the, the you know, you might leave here losing a pound. That's the good students. And the bad ones back there who are just glaring at me, you are only hurting yourselves back there, people. <laughs> the Surgeon General also uh, came out with guidelines. Did you see this? This was in the paper. She said, people have got to understand what a normal portion size is. A three-ounce serving size of chicken or steak or fish or whatever it is is the size of a deck of cards. That's a serving size. A one-ounce serving size of cheese is no bigger than a pair of dice. And so I think what we can learn from this, folks, is that the Surgeon General has a real gambling problem. (laughs) And by the way, the Surgeon General, I learned, is neither a surgeon nor a general. How does she get away with that title? I'm going to start calling myself the astronaut billionaire, you know? (laughs) So all these benefits to laughter is meant. Plus, it's social. We don't usually laugh when we're by ourselves, do we? Do you? Yeah? You crack yourself up over here, this table? That's healthy, too, to a point, I guess. So all these benefits to laughter as medicine, and yet here we are, we laugh far less often than we did as kids. How crazy it is, these healthcare people, the way they talk to each other. I used to work in the emergency department where we would communicate via this alphabet soup of acronyms and abbreviation. That's how we'd talk. We'd talk about a patient coming with SOB. You know, no, not what you're thinking. <laughs> Shortness of breath, right? SOB. AOB, alcohol on breath, right? So we'd say, ah, oh, we got a guy with SOB and AOB. He's also got B-O, I mean P-U. It was a DUI and his BMW SUV, so start an IV, get an EKG and an MRI, call the ICU and his PCP and the OR, ASAP, give him some TLC. In fact, turn on the NBA on ABC on his TV, because I hear the MVP just tore his ACL. (laughs) Here, this proves my point exactly. As I was researching laughter, I came upon the actual medical definition of laughter. This is the actual scientific definition of a laugh, which I think proves my point. It's a psychophysiological reflex, a successive rhythmic spasmodic expiration with open glottis and vibration of the vocal cords, often accompanied by a baring of teeth (laughs) and facial grimaces. That's the actual medical definition of a laugh. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's actually the description of rabies. That's what that is. (laughs) 
there's humor and absurdity everywhere, even in health care. Uh, the, the Center for Disease Control has suggested you sing what when you wash your hands? Anybody know this? Happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday. They, this is an official recommendation. You should sing happy birthday when you wash your hands. Why? Because then you know you've done a thorough job and gotten rid of all the germs. As I mentioned, though, I'm a germaphobe, so I always sing the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. <laughs> And uh, speaking of, of music and health care, uh, the, uh, the American Heart Association, who knows this one? What do they recommend you sing when you're doing CPR? Staying alive. That's right. Staying alive. This is an official recommendation. Now, you should sing Staying Alive. Well, first of all, it's, it's appropriate for what you're doing, and it's easy to remember, you know, when you think, oh, what am I supposed to say? Well, yeah, it's, it's easy to remember. But more importantly than all of that, it's the exact beats per minute for effective CPR is staying alive, staying alive. Ha, 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 ha. Well, well no. <laughs> no, don't do as I do. That, no. You got to stay you can't do the Travolta you got to stay focused but so it took them a long time to figure this out cuz first they suggested you sing Elton John song Someone Save My Life Tonight It was an appropriate song but it was too slow and all the patients died so that was not and then they had the opposite problem meaning they had the right beats per minute but the wrong message and that was another one bites the dust another one bites the dust Another one's gone, another one's gone, another one bites the dust. So there's another tidbit for you. In addition to laughter, music, is, singing is good for you. And, and uh, another one, a quick tidbit I found out, is that uh, procrastinators tend to get sick more often than people who get things done in a timely manner. But we're going to have more on that later. So, um, <laughs> exactly. So, um, so, yeah, we got to learn to laugh at ourselves, folks, and then, uh, uh, yeah, don't forget to add a little levity, add a little, add a little uh, humor whenever you can. You, you learn some yoga today and nutrition and uh, mind relaxation, and so don't forget a sense of humor. That's a useful, a useful tool, as, a tool as well. Add a little levity whenever you can. Here's an easy thing you can do for a quick laugh, a quick chuckle, a quick smile. You force feed animal crackers to vegetarians. In my office, we like to simultaneously give laughing gas and tear gas to the Botox patients. <laughs> yes, they laugh and they cry, but you can't even tell. It is, it's amazing. I don't have patience at all anymore in the conventional sense. Uh, believe it or not, this, this is what I do. This is my medical practice now. This is it, lecturing, uh, speaking to, to groups. I, I started out in emergency medicine, and then I quickly determined that was not for me, and I felt my real calling was to use humor and laughter as preventive medicine, right? To get people thinking about living a happier, healthier life before they wound up in the ER or the doc's office or the clinic. Because after all, health care in this country is still more about sick care, right? And, and the more we can prevent illness in the first place and the better we can take responsibility for our own heart and soul and mind and body and the better off we're going to be, right? And so, so, uh, so I gave up emergency medicine to, to do this and to answer the question on everybody's mind, yes, my parents were thrilled with that decision. <laughs> my hope is that one day the health plans will reimburse us all for a comedy rental. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? Or they'll refer you to the comedy club, you know? Which is still probably a two drink minimum in addition to your copay and a bunch of paperwork, uh, you know, probably a nightmare. So I always like to close by giving you these final prescriptions for doing just that. Some final prescriptions for living a happy, healthy life. And I like to deliver these in a format that's a tribute to my favorite doctor. The doctor I admired most growing up, and that's Dr. Seuss. Just a few miles down Route 2.4, that quirky old town is a shambles no more. It once had a problem with decent health care. The ER was packed, not a gurney to spare. The Grinch needed Prozac for feeling dejected. The star-bellied Sneetch's tattoos got infected. The cat in the hat always needing cat scans, and Sam always there puking green eggs and ham. 
Now, the town's only doctor was really discouraged. He thought and he thought and he mustered the courage to make up a pledge for preventive type care that the townsfolk recited right in the town square. I will not eat a lot of sweets. I will not overeat red meats. I'll keep my portion smaller sized. I'll limit salt and all things fried. I will not drink a lot of booze. Instead, plain water I will choose. I'll keep my fats the good kind, like in soy and nuts and beans, olive oil, fish like salmon, tuna and sardines. Fruits and veggies, fiber and whole grains are really key. I'll get my daily calcium, my aspirin C and D. I'll get my antioxidants. I'll eat my lycopenes. I'll eat omega-3s and flavonoids. Now, what that means is I will choose the darker colors for my meals and snacks, like spinach, green, and berries, blue, and tea, both green and black. I'll choose tomatoes, broccoli, garlic, red wine, and I'll win. For purely social reasons, I will never drink white zin. Now, several weeks passed, and the doctor observed them. Folks lost some weight. Evidently, they heard him. Encouraged, he thought, as he walked down the street, that people quite simply aren't just what they eat. They also have bodies and spirits and minds. And so he wrote down a new set of guidelines. If you're smoking coke and token, must be joking, that's obscene. It's like sun and buns and fun under the sun with no sunscreen. And while I scream of screens, I'm keen on all those screening tests, especially the ones for colon, prostate, and your breast. Wash your hands, brush and floss, and buckle up to drive. Wear a helmet on your head to keep yourself alive. Challenge both your mind and body. Paint or stretch or read. Change your oil, toil in the soil pulling weeds. Write or fly a kite, test your might or take a walk, swim or hit the gym or shake your limbs to 50s rock. Get some satisfaction interacting with each other, whether Horton, Yertle, or the Lorax, or your brother. Don't be late or break a date with mates, don't hate or lie. Do say please and thank you, smile, and look folks in the eye. Surround yourself with loved ones. It's a healthy way to live. Say I love you, sorry. Hug and kiss. Learn to forgive. Most of all, though, love yourself and to yourself be true. Trust your gut. You fed it well. Take risks. Enjoy the view. Ups and downs abound. They're all around those highs and lows. Don't give up. Slow down. Show up. Fall down. Get up and go. Be present. Don't dwell on the past, its glories or its sorrows. Be prepared. Look forward to, but don't count on tomorrow. Don't worry, be happy, listen to your favorite songs, do your best, make mistakes, and fix what you did wrong. Learn to love the little things, like cobbler, freshly baked, a sunny day, a rainy day, and every breath you take. My final tip he wrote for living happily ever after is have a sense of humor. The best medicine is laughter. And then when he finished that doctor so rare, he posted his words right there in the town square. Again, he took notice the next several weeks, and he saw folks were nicer when walking the streets. He saw people exercise, leave larger tips. Old folks took classes and went on nice trips. Lovingly, husbands held hands with their wives. In short, he saw folks celebrating their lives. And so if you go out on Route 2.4 to that quirky old town that's a shambles no more, and you find that old doctor and buy him a drink and ask him of all his advice, does he think there's one real key that's the most beneficial? Well, he'll smile, he'll pause, and he'll look quite official. He'll say, drink red wine. And when you're in a funk, just laugh. Folks around you will just think you're drunk. <laughs> Thank you for coming, folks. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the rest of your day.